Computed properties are properties that can be bound to the template like data properties, but have logic, like methods. We use them to compose data from existing sources. A major benefit of computed properties is that they're highly performant because they're cached. View will only go through the re-rendering process if a computed property's dependency changes. A computed property is defined as a method in the computed option of the component's config object. As an example, let's say we allow the user to input their first and last name in two separate input fields. We want to display their full name in the template, so we use string interpolation to output each data property. When we run the example in the browser and enter the names, it works as expected. But, we can optimize the component by using a computed property that combines the first and last names into a full name. Then, instead of outputting the two names separately in the template, we output the computed property. When we run the example in the browser and enter first and last names, the full name shows as expected. So basically, it does the same as the first example. At first glance, the computed property seems redundant. The first example, without the computed property, uses less code and is easier to read. While that's certainly true, computed properties give us two important benefits. Computed properties are cached. View will only re-render the text when one of the names change. This makes the component a lot more performant. And, because a computed property is a method, we can add complex functionality that we otherwise couldn't with just string interpolation. A common use case for a computed property would be to calculate and display the total price of items in a shopping cart. Anything that's returned from the vModel directive and regular methods isn't cached. You will reevaluate and re render it each time an event fires in the rest of the component. Let's demonstrate this by adding a counter to the previous example with a method that increases a number when the user clicks a button. We'll also move the full name computed property to the methods option so that it's recognized as a regular method. And, because methods are invoked and not referenced, we have to add parentheses to the string interpolation in the template. Finally, to help the demonstration, we'll let full name log a message to the console each time it's invoked. When we run the example and take a look in the console tab of the browser's dev tools, we'll see the console log message. If we type something into the two name fields, another console log statement will be added, showing the number of times full name was re-executed for each character we typed. If we click on the button a few times, the number increases. So, full name is invoked each time we click the button, despite not being related to the counter at all. To complete the demonstration, let's put full name back in the computed option so view can cache it. We'll also remove the parentheses from the string interpolation in the template because computed properties are referenced, not invoked. When we run the example in the browser and type the name John Doe, we'll get the same result as before. But, if we click the button, the number won't increase. View will only re-execute a computed property when one of its dependencies change. In this case, the names. The counter isn't a dependency, so it doesn't affect the computed property. But, if we change a dependency like the first name, to Jonathan, the computed property will re-execute. So far, our computed properties have been read-only. That's to say, we only read the computed property from the logic and display it in the view. You may find yourself in a scenario where you not only need to display the property, but also change it. View makes this easy for us to do with getter and setter methods. To use getters and setters, we need to change the definition syntax from a method to an object. Inside the object, we define two methods called get and set. To demonstrate, we'll use an example that uses a computed property 
to concatenate a hard-coded first and last name into a full name. Let's start with the getter method. The getter method does what the name implies. It allows us to get the value from the computed property. This is the default behavior of a computed property, so our logic in the getter method can be the same. When we run the example, the full name shows on the page, as we expect. The setter method changes any of the computed property's dependencies. It expects a single parameter, which is the returned value of the getter. In our case, the returned value is a string that contains two words, separated with a space. We can use the JavaScript split function to separate the words into an array and assign them as new values to the data properties. Whenever we assign a new value to full name, the setter will be invoked and assign the value to the data properties. As an example, let's add a method that changes full name when the user clicks a button. If we go to the browser and click the button, it will change the name from Tony Stank to Iron Man. The change can come from anywhere, it doesn't have to be a method specifically. For example, we can change full name in something like the mounted lifecycle hook. If we run the example in the browser, the name will change as soon as the app is mounted to the DOM. Don't worry if you don't understand the lifecycle hook right now, we cover them in depth in the lifecycle hooks lesson. In the next video, we'll learn how to watch data and computed properties with watchers and execute code in response to any changes. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.